Call of Duty Black Ops 1, the classic that we all know and love, that we spent on way too much time during our young years, if it was grinding through multiplayer or taking on hordes of the undead on even more classic and nostalgic maps. But that's not all that Black Ops is notorious for, no no, it also has arguably the most intense fun and amazing stories that I have ever experienced in a Call of Duty campaign. And today we are going to go back, go back to the chaotic world of the late 60s and see just how good this bad boy was, or if it even was as good as we remember it being. The story starts off with our main protagonist and one of the characters we get to play as in the game, Mason, tied up in some sketchy room covered with TVs. Like a load of TVs and he's being interrogated by an anonymous character that we do not hear the original voice of or even see. There is questions about numbers, a lot of numbers. The numbers Mason. What do they mean? This line we all know, it is engraved into our minds at this stage. Where are they brought I don't know anything from? about any numbers. What about Dragovich? Do you remember him? Ragovich, the main villain of the story. And so we started off in the beginning, in Cuba, Bay of Pigs, where we finally see Woods, our main man, or well, he's my main man, and Bowman, who is voiced by Ice Cube, my favorite voice actor. I love him when he uh, played that fly that one time. We're here to get info off of Carlos, which ends up going a bit sour because Woods is a silly guy and loves to stab people's hands. Oh, damn. I should probably relax. Anyway, as we make our way through the streets, it's the usual. Shoot people, use the grenade launcher, and whoa, is that a car? And I can drive it? Get out the way! Ah, our first of many, many, many slow-mo shots inside of Black Ops 1. Well, that was sick. After a little bit more of zapping, we're in Castro's compound, where the main objective is, well, to take down Castro. That was probably one of the most shortest intense music bits I've ever experienced, but it was so worth it. From here you make your way through Castro's villa, causing mayhem, more epic slow-mo shots and then boom, ew, Castro's head guts. Oh, an achievement, that's pretty cool. Now it's time to get out of here, which was wild. As we made our way through the sugar fields, it was time to go down to the airbase and run through a bombardment field, until we got to a plane. That just makes this campaign just so good. Guns blazing, explosions everywhere, exactly what you want in a campaign, until Mason decides to sacrifice himself, which ends up getting him caught by getting knocked out. Oh damn, is that Castro? Turns out it was actually a fake that we killed. Not gonna lie, they chose a very good double. Looks really like him. Also, here's Dumb and Dumber, Dragovich and Kravchenko, which my fellow zombies gamers from Cold War might remember him. That he suffers. He will know suffering beyond his darkest fears. I have plans for you, American. Oh my god, he got really close there. Well, from here Mason got taken to Verkuta to be tortured. You will break America. Victor is enough. My friend. Ah. Viktor Reznov, my MVP. And so the steps begin, such an iconic part of the game. I think my favorite part about this is Treyarch kind of repurposing it inside of the Origins easter egg in Black Ops 2. I know it's something completely different, but I just love how they took this iconic part of the Black Ops 1 story and re-implemented it in the future, making another really iconic easter egg. It's actually a very reoccurring theme with Treyarch and zombies and our campaign mode. The amount of times we've seen this throughout the Call of Duty history is actually impressive and it happens quite a few times in the Black Ops 1 campaign. As we rushed to escape from Verkuda, it was pretty epic. The music, the gunfights, makes you really feel like you're there. And ah, uh, Sergei, the walking and living tank. Once we're inside of this building, the task was to get on top of the roof and use a slingshot, which was way harder than I thought it could be. I missed so many times, it was kind of embarrassing. But once all the points are taken out, we get guns and push forward to escape. Using a harpoon gun, yes, a harpoon gun, I was able to take down a chopper, which crashed into a building that we were able to get into. 
inside of this building, we made our way through more just guards that we had to take down over and over. These guards wanted to lock off a point of the armory, and Sergei, the chad that he is, decided to hold the door so at least Mason could get through it. But unfortunately, Sergei could not hold it for long and died. Rest in peace, you gentle giant. Thankfully, I as Mason was able to reopen the door and the escape continued. Reznov coincidentally finds a blowtorch that he uses to open a door. Turns out behind this door is a minigun. Yep, from here, I get to use this thing. And let me just tell you, it is epic. Once again, the music just shooting an almost infinite amount of ammo until we get attacked by tear gas, which knocks Mason out. And then after a while, you wake up inside of a garage and oh my god, do I get to ride this bike? Oh, you do. And on top of that, you get to use a shotgun with it. And then now I get to control this turret on top of this truck that gets driven by Reznov to, to the full escape, which was the main objective to get on top of this train, which Mason actually was successful in doing, but Reznov wasn't. And this is where Mason and Reznov parted their ways for now. Oh, the Pentagon, Hudson. Oh, the music is just so good. This is Nikita Dragovich. I believe you two have already met. When do I kill him? <laughs> Mason is not messing around. And so here we are, in the Pentagon. This bit is like a fever dream. Mason is really tripping balls. In a dream. <laughs> Whoa, that was an interesting layout. Dragovich. Like, what the hell was that? Ah, Ascension. One of the many maps taken from campaign and then re-implemented into zombies. And there's Woods. I love the little easter egg on his arm. It's the 115 element, but as a tattoo. The reason we're here is to stop the launch of the rocket. Wait. Oh, damn. It's Weaver. And Kravchenko? Oh no, not Weaver's eyeball. Little side note actually, I love how they have Weaver and Kravchenko return in Cold War Zombies. Which makes me wonder, is this all connected to Cold War Zombies? Like this campaign itself? It gets really messy with the new soft reboot that they have nowadays, but still pretty cool to think about and consider. Anyway, now we have to go rescue Weaver as well. So we snuck through and found guards that we were able to kill and take their clothes to disguise ourselves. We then met up with Bowman and Brooke who were also disguised. A couple men out front. Okay, Bowman, Brooks, get them out of the way. How the hell are they not able to hear us speaking English? Well, it appears that they also found the bodies, so they were alerted that somebody is in the area, which meant that there was no more hiding around, and we went in guns blazing. Once again, on top of another building, the objective was to protect Bowman and Brooks as they went and made their way to Weaver to save him. I was able to use a crossbow with explosives here, and it was really cool. Slow mo, yeah. No. To kill Dragovich. Mason really is determined. Oh no, the launch is starting. We need to stop it before it's too late. But we were too late. Where's my ray gun, guys? Just let me use the ray. Oh, but I, I guess this works. Oh, shit. And there it goes. I got to blow it up. That's pretty satisfying. Stay with me, Mason. Escape. Whoa, Kravchenko jump scare. But then we ran into Dragovich's limo. I had him. Satisfied, Mason. No. no, not yet. Not until I see the body. Dragovich, did you confirm the kill? Trust me. That rat bass is a fucking charcoal briquette. So Woods was sure that it was done. Okay. Somehow I knew Dragovich was still alive. Uh, well, he's still alive. Well, it's NAM time. And I also cannot play the banger that is playing during this mission because I will get copyrighted, but it kind of goes along like this. Okay, I'm gonna stop before I butcher it more, but you get the idea. It's just brilliant. And here it is, Hudson and Woods crossover. It's kind of weird to see it. Oh my god, Woods, are you okay? The rest of this mission is just wild. The way they are able to capture a war feeling is insane. I've never actually been in war myself. 
yeah, but I honestly imagine it being like this. Gunshots everywhere, explosions everywhere, men dying left and right. It was insane going through these trenches, and even some of them seemed to be invincible. As we made our way further, it was time to down some tanks. Mmm, ah, frames, yes. Mason is really being pushed, like crazy. And now we're in Hue City, where the sky was red. We're here to get a defector that has information on Dragovich. Oh damn, we crashed into a building. Wood supplies Mason with a SPAS-12, which has incinerary rounds, and oh my god, this thing is so fun to use. This next part really confused me, and it still does even as I edit this video. I failed this part at least 5 times because I kept on shooting civilians, which I'm like 99.8% sure I didn't. Each time I redid it, I shot the people who had guns, and somehow they were classified as civilians to the point where I just decided to leave it up to Woods and the others to clear them out and it actually worked. I have absolutely no idea why they were civilians, when clearly they were weren't, but I guess let's move past it. Anyway, the search continued until we found a corridor. Each one of us took a door and the door I went through had me being attacked and oh my god, is that, is that Reznov with a fresh cut? My god, looking good. He somehow actually managed to get away from all the Russians and he now is the one that supplies us with the documents we were here after, which is very interesting. Outside I got this cool radio that gave me a lot of power. It allowed me to call in airstrikes that helped us progress through the city streets. We were trying to make our way out to an evac site. Woods looked absolutely terrified in this split second. At the evac site, we had to stand our ground for a while since there were no choppers available that could help us. It got really bad, but thankfully there was a boat here instead to help us escape. On the document, we learned who was actually involved in this entire mission. Kravchenko, Steiner, and one of them was also called Dr. Clark. Now in this mission, we get to play as Hudson, who was interrogating Clark with Weaver. This duo is what makes me wake up in the morning. Think about what you have to lose. Can't even imagine how sore that must have been. Does he have tattoos on his face? Oh damn, Dragovich's men are actually here to get rid of Clark. Ah, I get to use dual wield M1911, oh my god. So that's what happens when you're exposed to Nova 6. Slow motion. This mission I think has the most amount of slow motion that any other mission has on this game, I'm pretty sure. But overall, the main objective is to escape from the people who are shooting at us. One cool thing is that this mission is very vertical. It did bite me in the ass sometimes, accidentally falling to my death, but it was still pretty cool. A cleanup crew was sent to actually steal Clark's research, but he was a bit prepared and uh, it didn't go very well. He blew them up. And then there was this roof part. Yeah, that's what you get for getting me killed. I got you. What about the numbers, Clark? Oh yes. Not nothing. And the keys. Oh my god, that's not what I meant, like, Jesus, dude, you okay? Well, I guess he's dead, so now we got a dip without him. It wasn't looking too good until one last slow motion shot to save us. It was time for Hudson to go to Russia to get Dr. Steiner. But before we do that, it was time for some Reznov lore. Oh damn, we're actually in World War II. One cool thing about this mission is that you get to use World War II weaponry. I know that they're basically reused assets probably from World at War, but getting to use the PPSH and all the other World War II weapons is really fun and nice attention to detail. Also another thing to mention is I'm pretty sure this map in a way is also reused for zombies for Call of the Dead. The reason we're getting this flashback is to show the full story of young Kravchenko and Dragovich and how they were here to track down Steiner and the rest of the final Reich, the cleanup crew as you would say. So we progress through the frozen land, 
getting to use the MP40, classic grenades, and the STG. And then we got to Steiner, who seemed to just be chilling. Do not point that weapon at me. Hey, relax, dude. Steiner and Dragovich seemed to get along very well. We were tasked with bringing him to Nova 6. Here, we also learned the origin of Nova 6. Situation with the Gift Eager Stone Project. In 43, the Fuhrer realized the Allies could not be held back for much longer. We begin to look for more unconventional solutions throughout the war. My own research was focused on chemical weapons. It was meticulous and frustrating work. However, what we finally developed was a weapon more effective than we had ever dared to imagine. The weapon now housed within this vessel. Nova 6. One thing that I enjoy to this day in games that explore World War II is going above and beyond with what the Germans could have actually been making in secret. It is knowing that they really did do some ridiculous things back then in real life and honestly some of the things they did do actually helped us nowadays progress in medicine and some other areas. But I really dig this ideology of, well what if they were really cooking up something this ridiculous, worse than potentially even a nuke? Because you know it never really went anywhere because it did get stranded in the middle of a frozen land, like this. This is what I really like about this story. But we finally reached the part where Nova 6 was. And the crazy bastard that Dragovich was, he decided to test it on Reznov's men. Which unfortunately, it doesn't look good from third person now. He was a hero. He deserved the hero's death. Instead of giving his life for the glory of the motherland, he died for nothing. Damn, this is just heartbreaking. Thankfully, in a way, the British came to kind of rescue everyone, at least saving Reznov and some of his other men. From here, everyone became the enemy. So the crazy Reznov decided to arm the bombs that failed to blow up before and we had to escape, which we did. I had destroyed the Nova 6 shipment and prevented it from falling into the hands of the British. But I was a fool to think that the threat was over. It was only after I was captured and sent to Vokuder that I learned of Dragovich's true intentions. He would die before he gives up on Nova 6. Is that the melee attack sound in the background? Well, at least from the mission that we did with Hudson, he learned what the true effects are from Nova 6. If it was from experience <laughs> or from the documents, I'll let you decide. And we're back in Vietnam. Oh, DMZ confirmed. The mission starts off with a crashed chopper that was going bad until Reznov came to the rescue. For how much slow motion there is in this game, it's actually really worth it and makes it so damn cool. The Vietnamese people in this game are actually insane. I can't keep up with them. They kill me so many times. Well, after that, Wood split me, Bowman and the others around to plant C4 around stealthily, which was a pretty fun part to play through. This all changed real quick and became the chaotic guns blazing real fast. One complaint I have with some of the mission design in this game is bits like this, where I just keep on getting killed killed by these guys over and over and I can't keep up. I don't know if it's because I'm getting old or something like that, but it's just something that really annoyed me. Progressing through further, we found a tunnel that Woods made sure was empty so that I could get in. Also, I kinda got stuck here. First got pinned by both Woods and Bowman and then I was on top of them. Inside of the tunnel, it was pretty spoopy. Until Reznov even made it more. He jump scared me. I have no idea what he is doing down here. He's honestly a little silly guy. Dude, I could have just helped you. Me and Reznov found this place that had the documents we needed. Shit. No! 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 Reznov! Well, I guess rip Reznov again? This honestly feels like a nightmare scenario for claustrophobic people. Wait, what? How? How is he here? I'm starting to become a bit suspicious about Reznov. Okay, from here, it's time to make our way to Laos, where the CIA downed a cargo plane that had the Nova 6 on it. So now, we're in Laos to get the Nova 6 before the Russians clean it up. From here, we were getting onto a boat that we were going to use to get there, and Woods decided to give this gunner guy a little bit of a talk. Once again, I cannot sing this song because it's copyrighted, but it went like this. Do -do 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 
do 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 ow do 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 ba ba ya ba ya po okay no more butchering that's that's all you get from me. It's the typical Vietnam music you hear basically each time there is a Vietnam war in a movie or a game. But you know what? It's sick each time and it works every time. This was honestly just peak gameplay. Get to destroy everything on my path using explosives and gunners and boat and ah, uh, it's just really cool. And I really enjoy these kind of levels inside of Black Ops 1. And unfortunately, this meant that they also got the gunner guy. That young kid didn't make it. I swear to God that Woods was crying. But he never let us see no tears. Damn. Poor Woods. I didn't know he had an M. The race to the plane continued until we got there. And the Nova 6 was gone. Only a China Lake was left behind, which I used as we attacked soldiers at the bottom. Which, um, didn't go very well. Like, really, not good. Mason, Woods, and Bowman once again got captured. Oh. Now we're a pilot in space. Oh, okay, we're going to be helping a ground team to make it through the mountains. This ground team were both Hudson and Weaver and a few other soldiers. Honestly, I was worried this was going to be one of those in the air, rain down gunshots and explosive missions, which yeah, are cool, but I'm not the biggest fan of. But thankfully, it wasn't. It was more like, go here, do this kind of a thing. And when it was doing this, it switched to play as Hudson, and I got to do that thing. The main objective was to take out their internal comms so that the base we need to go to to get Steiner was gone dark. Jason Hudson led the attack on Yomatop. Yeah, 20. What? That cutscene just ended abruptly. I didn't even do that. This was a mostly stealthy level. We had to rappel down that let's just say I wasn't very good at. But once we were fully down, it was, well, once again, slow motion. After that, it was more stealth that somehow didn't go well. I'm not sure if I messed up or if they alerted it. It was like part of the story. It was a bit of a weird one. Once we were here inside, we took out more soldiers and destroyed connections to a radar dish. As we were making our way out, Things took a turn, and Hudson nearly died. The explosion actually caused an avalanche, and now not only were we trying to just escape, but also we were trying to run away from the avalanche. So we parachuted off of the edge, and this was pretty sick. Hmm. <laughs> Just the music. Chef's kiss. And I also love how short it plays. Like, <laughs> it's just over instantly. We got to the facility, and it turns out it was actually a trap in a weird way. Siner wasn't here, but he was communicating with us. Here's where we learn a lot of the locations planned to be attacked, and also that Dragovich has sleeper agents all over the states. And, wait, that means Mason is one of them. Steiner was actually willing to help and told us that there is 36 hours until the sleeper agents were active. And also, he told us where he was, which was Rebirth Island. No, not that one. The whole place was set to blow, so we only had 30 minutes to escape, which of course we did, but we left in style. Turns out, Dragovich has weaponized the Nova 6. It's getting really risky around here. Turns out that the communists have invaded Murica long ago and the sleeper agents are ready to be activated with the numbers. So the guy interrogating knows what the numbers mean? Then why the hell is he constantly asking him? Unless he thinks they like mean mean something. Oh yeah, okay, that's, that's what he means? So we need to find an overall broadcast station area? And of course Mason is in his own little world and we're back in Vietnam. Vietnam, where Woods and Mason were in a water cage and then brought to Bowman, who wasn't doing very well. You don't scare me. A communist piece of shit. No, Bowman! Oh, Mason was pissed. You can't kill me! You shoot, GI, you shoot! Fuck! Mm -hmm. That was close. Six and eight o'clock. Slow motion! Well, it's time to hunt the bastard that killed Bowman. That's exactly what we did for Bowman. Outside, we got a chopper. 
And oh my god, another fun infinite ammo blasting level. We continued through the valley and cleared our path, and then we landed in an area that was close to where Kravchenko was, and it's time to finally hunt him down. And it didn't go very well. He kind of beat Woods up and then absolutely just handed Mason's ass to him until Woods, the crazy man, got him. And unfortunately, this means that he is now in a way dead. And Mason is really tripping balls. I, I, I really don't think Grisnav is real, guys. After that, Mason went rogue and dipped to Rebirth Island because the numbers told him. Now we're in Rebirth Island, where the Nova 6 is basically being cooked at. It was time to make our way through with Reznov. We are outnumbered, Mason. Oh damn, hatchet, that's actually pretty cool. We had to sneak past a bunch of helicopters, kill some people, and then when we were getting closer and closer, the alarms went off because the CIA was here to stop Mason and also Nova 6. It's kind of like a mixed situation, but overall, they're here to protect Steiner, which Mason is here to kill. Oh damn, this is five, like the zombies map. That's funny. They really do just take the advantage of these locations already made and then implement them into zombies. It's honestly just genius. A lot of people complain about that nowadays, but come on, like they did it back then, why wouldn't they do it now? Cut a lot of time off, implement pretty cool set pieces. Five is a pretty cool set piece, hell yeah. Anyway, that was a bit off track. We finally got to Steiner and Reznov and Mason went a bit crazy. <laughs> Look at him in the back. Whoa, okay, so now we're from Hudson's perspective, which was 20 minutes before everything went down. It starts off by driving through streets and controlling a turret that takes a bit of a turn and the Nova 6 is unleashed. Thankfully, Hudson and everyone else had hazmat suits and they put them on. The really cool thing about the hazmat suits is by wearing them, they do get actually permanent damage and when they break, you get exposed to Nova 6. Anyway, this created an interesting set piece, making our way through soldiers after soldiers. The view was very limited until we met up with Weaver and made our way to Mason, Reznov and Steiner. And what? It's been Mason all along? Who could have seen that coming? Mason, no! And oh damn. He got Steiner. Oh, he's also wearing Reznov's outfit. Okay. Now back at the interrogation, we hear two people arguing. And oh boy, the big reveal. It was Hudson all along. And I guess Weaver as well. You want to die with him? Your choice. Damn it! Why can't you remember? Reznov's dead, Mason. Did you hear me? He's dead! We was right. We're out of time. The Russians fucked you up. I know you. You're not a traitor. Oh damn, Hudson, no. So we're in room nine and Mason is losing his mind even more as he makes his way out, trying to remember what or where he is. The story is unfolding. I remember! Ah, Makuna! The subject has been successfully implanted with the knowledge to translate the number sequences. So, what is the problem? His responses to our orders have been uh, sporadic, unpredictable. He shows a remarkable resilience. Why? He is unusual, atypical. Uh, few men possess such will. Our other test subjects have been far more successful. So, Mason was basically built different from the way it seems. Damn. So it turns out that there never was a Reznov. He died back at the escape, and Reznov re-brainwashed Mason, changed the things that Dragovich made him do, like kill Kennedy and other things, and Reznov replaced those names with Dragovich, Kravchenko, and Steiner. Do with him what you wish, General. So I give to Boom, he remembers. The boat, all the way from the beginning. It was in front of us all along. Station within their borders. All instructions will be broadcast from the result. The result. I know where the number station is. It's a ship. I saw it a long time ago. The Rasalka. Where? Cuba. <laughs> 
I honestly love this bit. Just the where and glasses and music combo, funniest thing ever. And so we were off to the boat to finish it all. Here we need to stop the numbers from being fully broadcast. And ah, last mission, last attempt at a fun vehicle mission, this time on a chopper, once again, guns blazing. Once we were on the boat, it turned out the signal from the numbers was actually coming from the bottom of the boat, like underwater. So somehow, they got access to scuba gear and made their way down. I don't really know where they got the scuba gear, I get it, they're like CIA soldiers, maybe they were on the boat, probably, still a bit of a weird one. And so here we found the number station, and there he is, there's Dragovich. Dragovich! Yes, I'm gonna kill you! Try to fuck with my mind! You don't know anything! Like the Jeremy gets my own! Like I'm going to kill my own president! Right? Well, I guess he's dead now. From here, we managed to get away. Mason! is over. We won. For now. That was probably the most late 2000s ending I could imagine us getting. 1, 7, 19, 20, 10, 14, 2, 3, 19, 0, 8, 11. 22. Oh no. 21. Oh no. <laughs> so it turns out that in the end, it, they had a backup, which isn't much of a surprise, but the fact that they added Mason into this footage is just hilarious, but also pretty sick. And oh, what a story. 10 out of 10. Wait. Whoa, 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 oh my god, yes, five, I completely forgot they pulled a similar move like they did all the way back in World at War. And so here we are, ladies and gentlemen, this is definitely one of the top, like, top best Call of Duty campaigns, or just overall stories. I know a lot of people are very nostalgic with it, and me too. I only have replayed this twice, so this was like my second time, and I know throughout the video I was like, what, blah blah blah, it's honestly just to make the video a bit more entertaining. I'm planning to cover basically all of the campaigns from Call of Duty, probably gonna skip over some just because they're not that good, but if you guys did enjoy it and you have watched this far into the video, that is insane. Thank you so much. I want to just explore more with content, no more relying on zombies being good, because if you don't know, I'm a Call of Duty Zombies content creator and I don't know what to feel like with zombies nowadays. I really do enjoy playing games and right now I'm going to be sticking to Call of Duty but I'm hoping to expand from here to potentially Battlefield and maybe even other games, specifically storylines based on, for now, war and zombies to just keep it similar to the way the channel goes. I also want to implement maybe different games because... As much as you might be surprised, I like to play a lot of games. Not just Call of Duty, but overall, storyline games are fantastic, and I like to do this kind of new style of content where I just quickly describe it to you, my experience, the story, so if you maybe want to go through a nostalgia trip or something like that, then you can come along and watch this video, or if you just want to be like, oh wait, what happened in this game just so I'm more prepared for this story, this is exactly what this video is based for. Just something really quick, obviously it's kind of long just because, obviously it's gonna be long, but it is a 4 hour ish game that I probably cut down to less than an hour. Also, just to quickly go over the game as a whole, Zombies, 10 out of 10, Multiplayer, 10 out of 10, Black Ops 1 is just going down in history as arguably one of the best Call of Duties ever made. And the campaign makes up for it because everything in this game is just really fun. And considering since it's COD 2024 year and it's Treyarch, I think it's really nice to just revisit these campaigns since COD 2024 is supposed to have its own campaign. The campaign itself, from the way it's rumored as of right now, isn't looking to be a classic style of campaign but hey i'm still really looking forward to it and seeing all of the rebooted characters and zombies and stuff like that and also if you're hoping for a video that was more like oh let's go over multiplayer and zombies this video i guess wasn't that and i do apologize you know i gave you a really quick review of the other mode there's plenty of videos out there anyway thank you so much for watching be sure to subscribe be sure to drop a like in the video and i'll see you guys in the next one peace out